day five, it ran Embassy Siege. In reality, in 1980, this day was the resolution, Bank Holiday Monday. However, we have another day to wait. And the sixth day will be tomorrow, May the 5th. So I'm going to talk a little bit about day five before we hit the crescendo tomorrow of day six. Before I do that, as normal, please, if you'd like to subscribe free to my YouTube channel, Rusty Furman SAS TV, take a look at it, keep up to date with everything I'm doing and any future SAS orientated events. Uh, thanks, huge subscription on there already. On its way to 3,000, I think, which is very good. And it shows that I'm hoping people are enjoying the lockdown a little, little bit I can do to help. And at the same time, keep myself occupied. But let's get on with it. Tomorrow, I'll be posting, if not tomorrow, they will all be signed and posted, dated. 5th of May 2020, 5 5 20, 40th anniversary of the siege. That's books and prints. Everything is there on my website. Just go and have a look. There isn't an awful lot of books left. Um, probably about 15 prints. Not many books. But when you see the pile <laughs> that I've got, you'll understand why. And it's not easy to get hold of any straight away it's going to take a little while to get them never mind <coughs> so let's go into day five okay as we know from from yesterday we hit the point um where we've done the negotiations or sorry not the negotiation where they've actually had something put on the bbc radio that pleased them to some degree. However, things change. So the day in the mood inside the embassy, let's just talk about quickly about the terrorists. Okay. They, like us, wouldn't know tomorrow would be the last day. So they're trying to get anything they can frantically to get it out. The uh, Arabistan cause is now being uh, aired on the radio. So what's next for them? Maybe a step too much. So the moods of the terrorists, day five, you just have a little bit of a, a slanging match. We know that because of the eavesdropping devices and stuff. Mainly um, Salim, the leader, Faisal, the bully boy. If one didn't get it right, the other one wanted to take over. And we've seen it in lots of different situations that Salim, in my opinion, wasn't a strong leader. And I should imagine Faisal would be wanting to take the reins. But at the moment, it's still Salim. And because of that, inside the embassy, they've also got... Um, Lavasani, the press attaché to the embassy, the Iranian. He's winding them up, sticking his chest out. He's only a young lad. He's not frightened of them. Hates the way they talk about the Ayatollah. Pr um, painting stuff on the walls about the Ayatollah. Didn't like it. So he's sticking his nose out. PC Trevor Locke and a few of the others are trying to calm him down because they know it could lead to trouble. And if that's not what they want, at the moment it's peaceful negotiations, deadlines. Nobody has been killed. And they're just about to release, I think it was Karkuti, if not, it's one of them um, who was in pain. So the terrorists are releasing uh, the odd hostage great because you get a little bit more information every time there's a hostage released 
and that carries on throughout the day. Our guys, sorry, the police first, the Metropolitan Police, they're there every day doing their job, very good job, securing stuff, driving us to and from the main base station over at Regent's Park with and without our uh, kit and equipment sometimes. We are over there, half a team, i.e. the red team, then the blue team alternating. So there's always somebody ready to go <clears throat> at the doc's house if, if the shit hits the fan and something strange happens. We still have a team who at a second's notice is ready to go and rescue the hostages. So that can't be overlooked. Um, has to be done. We need to have that command and control all the way through. So, what about our guys, the SES guys? Okay, we just said they're swapping over, alternating, but what are they actually doing? They can't do a lot when they're next door in the doc's house. So when they get down to Regent's Park barracks, that is where everything we could do, we did. Practiced abseiling down the, the buildings there to make sure we get that right. At a second's notice is ready to go and rescue the hostages. So that can't be overlooked. Um, has to be done. We need to have that command and control all the way through. So, what about our guys, the SES guys? Okay, we just said they're swapping over, alternating, but what are they actually doing? They can't do a lot when they're next door in the doc's house. So when they get down to Regent's Park, barracks that is where everything we could do we did practiced abseiling down the the buildings there to make sure we get that right not only that it's operations you have to stretch those ropes okay so if you can use them get them stretched hopefully they're not going to kink up at the last minute we need them so that's the abseiling up and down Room clearance drills, and we'll come on to that in a separate subject. Basically, you've got your own um, teams working within your, your smaller teams of one and two guys working within the red and blue team, um, getting their drills right. The pioneers have done a su superb job in building in the gymnasium there from the floor plans and stuff, scale models of rooms. Yes, scale models. Built out of wooden hessian and scaled down from the real size. Doors open whichever way they would open normally um, and everything like that so that when you go in there with your teams you can almost do it blindfolded at the end. So we didn't waste any time we were doing something all the time, studying photographs that were appearing of hostages and terrorists. Okay, and each one, each day, would have a little bit more meat on the skeleton. So every time you go down there, there's a little bit more for you to learn, a little bit more for you to study, stare at. Room clearance, very important for us. Kitten equipment, well, we know that inside out because we train in it every day. But what we don't want to do is get caught short and say, I wish I'd just looked at that, when in fact it's there for you to do. There's nobody looking over your shoulder. You've got your team, your team commanders and the lads. You don't need to tell them an awful lot. It's an individual responsibility. Okay, and this is where your teamwork helps. I shouldn't have to go and tell somebody, by the way, do your boots up. Not quite as bad as that, but um, it's, it, the individuals are there. They're highly motivated guys. They're good guys to work with. Each one knows 
the other person pretty much um, as well as he could do. Training together, of course, taking the piss out of each other and the team rivalry between the Antil more than us. And of course, John McAleese. With his plastic frog but makes noises annoying everybody but wouldn't change it for anything so that was that we couldn't do any shooting which really pissed us off <laughs> quite hard to do it in the center of london without being noticed um but in my, back in my day in 1980 you just couldn't do it we had nowhere to go not that we needed it. You know, most guys were very proficient with all the weapons. Um, and that proved a point at the end. But in those days, you know, everybody liked to have a little shoot. And that's the fun part of it. But the serious part is still thinking how we're going to do the job. So that day itself on the 4th of May wasn't too exciting but with everything that's come in all the intelligence everything's finished the rooms have been created and finished and of course we can do whatever we want and when we get back and take over from the other team it's quite easy. We can sit down, have a cup of tea or something and watch the snooker again. So outside of that, you can make a phone call or two from uh, inside the doc's house. In those days, there was only the one phone that I remember. You used to have to queue up to use it. And that was that. So I'm afraid the 5th of May, not the most exciting but we do feel we're getting somewhere. I said yesterday, the big picture, not too interested in. It's the nitty gritty now of what's going on, what the terrorists are up to, what the weapons uh, they're armed with. And of course, is there any booby traps which we don't know about? And of course, the hostages can't tell us, even the ones that are released. So it was a full day, you can expect that, and day goes into night, grab a bit of rest until the following day, and hopefully tomorrow I'll have a bit more to tell you on the last day of the siege. So with that, slightly shorter tonight, but it's probably going to be slightly longer tomorrow. It's only 24 hours in a day. So see you then. Who dares wins?